All right, so we're back working on the Tiger, and we've got a little bit more done here that was really not necessary to video record, but um, it could have anyway, but we didn't. We got the seat on, of course, you can see. We got the the rubber uh, pieces here that fill in the, the gaps and when we put the tank on. We managed to mount the rear foot pegs. We put the kicker rubber on and the shift rubber on. We were talking about that at the end of the last video set. Yeah. And, uh, oh yeah, grips. We're going to have to change these uh, nice white zip ties probably because I don't think I want to run that. But um, for now, uh, we covered up that knurling by putting this piece of rubber in there. I mean, we didn't have to. Either that's an eyesore for some people or not. I, I think I'm okay with looking at that instead of the knurling. <laughs> and then uh, we finished hooking up the wiring. And uh, we didn't really... Um, have to do much to that we just uh we tested it, it all worked we plugged it all in and turned on that we hooked up a battery and we tested it and we got everything to work i mean we didn't really have to reach change, it, change nothing. nothing otherwise i would have probably showed you all that but but the seat opens and closes nice we uh did have to change a flasher unit yeah we the yeah. original one didn't work that's about the only thing we had rob problems with the with the um electrical system so far so of course um, we installed the boiler ignition. You saw that. Um, all right. Well, I guess we're ready to put some pistons on this thing and and get this all ready to go. We gotta finish up the the cylinder assembly over there. But then uh, anyway, we're gonna be moving on to working on the lower end and the top end of this uh, this motorcycle. So stay tuned. All right, so we marked these so we can reference them when we take them apart the right way we get them put back the right way that we took them out, you know, so. But uh, unfortunately, like, the cylinder is not correct. And we have a late style lifter tap it block in one half, one side, and we have an earlier style in the other side. So I'm not sure if I'm pointing at them correctly, but I remember back when the first videos when we were taking this thing apart that that's they had two different, um, also they, they, yeah, this is the late one. So they're smooth on top. So this is considered tops, of course, so that's smooth right through there. Now the other side looks, is different. Early style. Scout. Yeah, see how the difference is? Now it's not because one's the exhaust, one's intake. It's the fact that they're different design types. So, and if I, I remember right in the first video, we, uh, or the second one, whatever one we were taking this apart, we noticed that there was different push rods and there was different, different, uh, wedding bands and different, different push rod tubes. Well, this is the, the base reason why that was like that. And we didn't know until we got this far into it. So, but anyways, this is all marked for no reason now because we're going to get a no, new no. set of, no, no, it, these are exhaust with the holes. These are intakes. So oh, we're gonna right. go back on the same place. Yeah, so we're gonna we Yeah, right. We're gonna that's right. We're gonna reuse these because they're in really good shape. Lifters. And, yeah, the actual lifters. And then we're gonna get new blocks because like I said, we need a nice decent set of actual ones that belong in the cylinder we're gonna be using. So anyway, it's not a huge deal. That's why we marked them so we can reuse them. So stay tuned here. We'll be uh putting this in later but just wanted to cover it right now so anyway stay tuned all right so we're getting ready to get some stuff ready for the cylinder here on the triumph motor um, we referenced these tappets so we knew which direction they went originally we're going to try to reuse these tappets because they're in pretty good shape and this one is the exhaust side See that? It has the hole in the center there, and then the intake side doesn't have the hole. But what we did was we we drew arrows pointing to the outside, and then one offset line and the line in the center. So that we, when we if we flip them, it will know the word which direction we need to go. Like this. Yeah. So we can't mix them up because we'll know that that's not how we we started it like that. <laughs> so we want it to be like this when we um, we were taking these tap it's out we notice that of course this is the older style cylinder so it doesn't have the drain hole or the feed hole for the for this uh 
block, the tappet block. So we're gonna at least have to get a tappet block for this cylinder over here when we go to start working on this. We're gonna clean this rust up, of course. We want a good, nice mating surface. Um, we did have it honed already, see why we didn't clean it up first, but we'll just cap it off and we'll just clean it up in, as much as, in, as delicately as we can. So, and then repaint it. That's right, we'll repaint it. So, stay tuned here and uh, we'll get some stuff going here and moving along here on this Triumph motor here. So we got this uh, cylinder all sandblasted and cleaned up before last time you saw it when we were working on getting the cases put together and putting the flywheel all together. It was all rusty when we were talking about it. But um, just the surfaces here were rusty. Now this was a uh, board out to 20 over because uh, back in the day you could get them at 10 over but they stopped doing that. So now it's just it jumps to 20 right away so it's kind of too bad because this could have easily been at a 10 over but we couldn't do it because there was no pistons available for a 10 over. It's kind of what we got going on there. And then now we're ready to paint it. So we're going to paint this up. Nice fresh black, hot barrel paint. And uh, get it ready to go on the engine here. So stay tuned here. Well after getting this all cleaned up, the cylinder here all cleaned up, we uh, repainted it. We repainted it with some high temperature uh, engine paint. So that way it withstands heat, of course, and stays black. Um, we got in there really well in the fins and stuff. Uh, blocked all the stuff off. Just got to pop the caps out that we had in here. And then take these old bolts off and put different ones in. When we set the new tapper blocks in. Otherwise, this is ready to go on the motor. And then we'll just, of course, uh, take all the masking and stuff off it. But paint job turned out pretty good on this, so pretty happy with it so stay tuned here we're gonna get ready to put this on all right so here we are we're back on the triumph we're gonna work on putting the, the top end on so starting off we're getting the cylinder assembly put together we just got done repainting this turned out really nice um, nice and shiny we even got inside there pretty well it's kind of hard to get the fins but we did pretty well um, it's not probably perfect, but it's turned out to be a better bike than I thought it was going to be anyway. So we're good, I think. <laughs> so anyways, what we got here is the tappet blocks. We're going to be putting, we're going to be installing them with a special tool that's made specifically for these. And then the the little screws or the bolts here that hold them in, lock them in. Yeah, they actually line into that hole there. So we got to make sure we get them nice and straight in there and line up that hole. But first, before that, we got to install these O-rings on the blocks. So, uh, anyway, we're going to work on driving these in, so stay tuned here. All right, so before we get started here, we need to identify what we're working with here. So, we need to make sure that we have the going the right way, so we need to put the wrong ones in the wrong side. So, first of all, so this is exhaust because of the oiler here. We've talked about this before mm -hmm. in previous mm -hmm. videos. It comes through and comes out here. So this is the front, which is the exhaust side. And, and oils through this hole on each side, oils each one of these lifters. Okay, so this is the exhaust type of block. Yep. So we'll make sure that goes on that side. We got these. So we'll orientate it, orientate it to where... It goes up there. All right, so this one's the intake one. It doesn't have... That's the doesn't, intake. It yeah, it doesn't have that. And but we've got to line that up. We're going to have to line it up as straight as we can. We can't have it. We can't have it like that. Right. It's got to be pretty right. much straight. Well, we got to put the O-ring on first. So now we're going to put the O-ring on it. How much of that? Shouldn't be much to it. <laughs> Hoping there ain't much to it. So this special tool is actually designed for these. He's got these two little knobs that hit on the Stick out the end right here, right? It's actually go right into where the the lifter, the tappets are going to. So, and mm. it's also made for driving it out and driving it in. Driving it out this way. Yep. So, let's see what happens here. Put some heavy oil on there. 
Yeah, that's kind of our heavy, thick assembly lube. That's really not assembly lube, but it's really good thick oil. No, it is assembly lube. Okay. Well, there we are. We're about ready to drive it in here. So, uh, we're going to look for some stuff quick and then we'll get ready to go. Alright, so now he's checking for, make sure it's straight here. It's not quite, though. We want to drive it as straight as possible. It might self-center, but it might not as well. We don't want to no, take a it chance. Won't turn if it's either right or it is off. Yeah, we won't be able to. We'll have to drive it back out if we miss that pin alignment at all. Because there isn't much of a of a clearance. That looks uh, pretty straight. On these screws, there isn't much of a of a clearance. So. It's a little bit of taper, but it's got to be really close. Okay, I think we're gonna try it. All right. I'll pull it here. Oops. You know, rain's about ready to go in. Yeah, let's get that. A little bit farther. Looks like it. How's the hole looking? Looks pretty centered. I mean, it's off a little bit, but. It is off a little? Barely, I mean. You see it? Not really. There you go. Does that look right? Yeah, can you see it then? here? Look at it. Oh, yeah, that looks okay. There we go. I think it's... Is it in there? Let me see. Yeah, put it on there again. No, it's not quite. It's got to go some more. I felt the bottom out there. Yeah. Let's see if we can see it very well here. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, all right. The o ring hopefully went in well. So now we put the locking bolt in here. Check it now. I don't want to see if it's looking like it's mashing it. Yeah, I know. Let's see if it scratches it up or something. Oops, there we go. It might be off a little. I can't tell. Yeah. It looks like it needs to be turned that way. I'm going to drive it back and turn it. It needed to go 
all this way. Yeah, to your left a little bit. Now let's see if I can rotate it while you're yeah hitting it. Yeah, a little, not too far. Does the O-ring look fine? to turn Dang. Mm. Okay. all right we got it turned a little bit more and then we were able to uh, drive it back in and it looks like it's well centered there's a little bit of a of a line there on the bottom but um, it's straight in there is there there's a little bit at the bottom see the picture see that right there yeah let me see is it far enough depth is it tight Hey, it's not in all the way yet. Sounded that like sounds like it bombed, uh, bombed out. Yeah, it looks like that at the top, too, if you look in there. Okay, now let's look and see. It's about the same, and no, I look at the top. And the top looks pretty flush, not maybe a little bit. Yeah, I think we're ready to check it out. I think we might have it. All right, running in the nut, the bolt again here. It's supposed to have the copper washer too. Let's just check alignment, then we can worry about that. But yeah, there's a washer for it. Oh, I guess mostly not. I got that out. I didn't get it out yet. Didn't hurt it anymore. All right, well, then we might have it centered. Now we gotta do this again to the other side, so uh, yeah, stay tuned here. All right, so we've got that copper washer on there correctly now, and we put a little bit of blue Loctite on just to help hold it. We're gonna run it in and lock it in there. Go. Now we can work on the exhaust side. Yay. Okay, there we are. All rings okay. on. Yeah, all right. All rings on. Lubricant. So we were up good. There again. This one may go on just as hard or easier. Yeah, there are. Slight press fit, as you could tell. Oh, it's a, more than a slight. <laughs> well, we could have used probably a press, but it's kind of hard to get in there, and we don't want to mess anything up either. So, well, you got the tool. I suppose you could press the tool. <laughs> nah, I think we did the right thing by just using the hammer. Normally, they say just drive it in. I didn't want to use a metal hammer. No, then you just end up damaging the tool end. Uh, uh, yep. The end of the tool. This way the tool still looks new. Yeah. Okay, here we go again. Maybe this one will be easier. Right? Oh no, it's kind of like a sight thing. It's not like it's keyed or nothing to where you can actually. I wish it was keyed. Not mess it up, yeah. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna work on driving this in. Looks 
see what happens, I guess. I'll try not to turn as I'm bending it. Well, that one went down pretty nice. Let's see if we can see in there. Wow, that looks a lot better than the other side did. I think we got it. So, yeah, we're getting ready here to go on to get this on the engine now, possibly. As soon as we get this uh, we're gonna run other test yet. Yeah, we're going to run this in yet. Just because we did the other one as well. No damage? Nope. No scratches? No scar, no nothing. All right, well, let's get the oh. copper washer, a little oh. bit of some Loctite. Oh. Mm. It was sitting here. Did it fall off the floor? Yep, sure did. Okay. Wow. Yeah, anyway, it's kind of nice. Kind of nice, it went together nice. Yeah, went together real nice, I think. Yeah, so before we put these on, we actually prepared the cylinders first. We, uh, we had them owned and cleaned up really nice when we got the cylinder and then uh, and then we painted it and now we washed it we got all the grime or whatever and dust and off of it and then we re-oiled it so it's nice and oil in there so it doesn't get all rusty and now we're ready to run this over and put some pistons on and then slide this on it so yeah stay tuned here well anyway this cylinder, if you remember, in one of the earlier videos, um, this was a different one that I had to get because they had the wrong one on the motor. So this has the oiling hole in it right there. Uh, that was blocked off in the case. Of course, we, uh, we've got this one here and re reworked it and everything. And it had a damage on the bottom, I think, too, but um, which wasn't really a big deal because it was out of the... Um, it was not within range of... The rings touching it, so I've got it sitting right here now. But um, this was an earlier motor, or off an earlier because motor. Because it's the same on each direction. Yeah. So this is like a '67 and older. I think we came 66. up with six. '66 and older. Yeah. Yeah. If I remember right, that's what it was. But um, we're gonna reuse these tappets because we went with the cam, and then we got it marked out how we're gonna how we're taking them out and how they match, so we don't get them messed up. So we'll just do that right now while we're here. This is the only one. So this is exhaust. The exhaust one has holes in it. Oh yeah, see so it holes? oils. Intakes don't. So no holes. No holes. Then holes. So, so these will go in here. Now I'm gonna oil the. I'm gonna oil these because these were new. Might as well give it a little first off lube, assembly lube. Yeah. that those oil holes because these oil holes are on the outsides so you got to make sure these oil holes are on the outside if you put this back to if you turn these this way and put it in 
they won't oil. So it defeats the whole purpose. So you gotta have that little oil hole. It's gotta line up with the oil holes on the outsides of each one of these. So it's gotta go this way. And that's why I marked it like I did. This would only go together one way. So yeah, it was to be yeah. correct. Right. See, if I turned it, then arrows wouldn't, these two little lines would be on the outsides and the arrow would be facing the center and I had it facing to the outside. And then make sure you had them right, you would have the yes. the lines. So right. orientated correctly. And the only reason I did that, the only reason, is so I didn't put this one over here and that one over here by mistake. Yeah, because because it was running this one was running on a certain lobe and this one was running on a different one. Right. And that's why I did that. There we go. Got that nice and oiled. I'm not gonna worry about that. That'll wear right off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean I could wipe it off, but I don't think it's necessary. I'll just go ahead and oil this up. Now we're gonna move the other side. Yeah. I'm gonna turn it. I'll turn it for you. Might as well make it easy. Right front and center. This is the only two left. Well, we could still mess it up. Oh yeah, it's a good mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These don't have. Yeah, for some reason they fell out. These, of course, these don't have any. We'll have them sitting pretty good, but um, if they would have fell out, we would have able to uh, still know back. where they went because there's no holes in because this. Because if one. you put them on the wrong side, <laughs> our markings. You know, now you can put them wrong if we face them in. But yeah. then they'd be facing in, and I put the arrows to the out. So in order to get it right, it has to be this way. All right. So here you go. <clears throat> That's just something I do. I don't know what other people do. Could have marked them, put them in a bag or something. It don't matter. Just as long as you keep them separated and marked. You know which way and where they go. Put them back. That's probably the best shot. All right, well, I guess we uh, we got the cylinder prepared, so now we're gonna go get the, the bottom end prepared to accept the cylinder, so. Anyway, stay Next tuned here. Cylinders. Yeah, that uh, the one over here, you might have saw in the footage, but it was sticking a little bit. It must not have got enough oil in there because. It just added some more. It felt like I would have taken it out to have some oil fixed or added to it. Yeah, it looks better. Yeah, it's going up and down nice now. All right, so here we are. We're getting the stuff all laid out for putting the pistons on and stuff. We got the push rod tubes and then the little retainers. We call them wedding bands. I think that's kind of what everybody calls them. They hold it on. I remember back in one of the earlier videos, we had two different push rod tubes. So we got a match set now. Um, we have four 
push rods somewhere that are identical and not broken. Remember that in the other video? We had some messed up push rods that were bent. Stuff broke off them. I'll get them in a minute. But uh, here's we got the, we're going to check ring gaps with the, with the cylinder. And we'll be going over that here real quick. I'll show you all that stuff. So uh, anyway. Um, yeah. Then we got to put the base gasket on yet too. So anyway, we're getting ready to go here. So stay tuned. Yeah. All right. So checking ring gap here. You gotta push them in a ways. Like that. That gap there. And you gotta make sure they're not tilted. So that's why I used a piston like this here. It's just, you know, pretty pretty straight. Now this is a, I think this is a three inch bore. Really close to it. Okay, two and three quarters, basically. It's supposed to have about three to four thousandths clearance per inch. And the 13 is tight. We got nine. I'm gonna get the book. The book tells you what the gap is supposed to be. I'm gonna guess that's three six nine. And what do we get? Yeah, that'd be three thousandths per per inch, and we don't have quite three, so three six nine. Yeah. So we yeah, we're just under three inch four, and he's sitting at nine. I'm not sure if you can hear all what he was saying, but uh, he's gonna get the book and get the real real specs. So let's uh. Stay tuned here, and we'll come back and get the book, and we'll go over this again. All right, so here we go. We got the book. It's saying the compression ring was 10 to 14, and we were at 9. Well, it seems 9. I'll try it Seems 10. like 9. I'll try I didn't try it 10. 11 didn't go. All right, well, let's try that 10 then, I guess. Well, that'd be a tight... goes it's tight try 11 again no 11 no 11 this won't go it starts but it won't go oh wait a minute 11 goes halfway see there oh yeah so we're tight. We're, we're we're at the minimum. I'm also yeah. I know it's fine. Making sure you have the the ring in the right way. Well, actually, this don't show a top or a bottom. So this type of ring can go either way. Eleven goes halfway. So it's matched. Uh, the machinist did a pretty equal job, I'd say, or the ring company. The ring company did. Fat nose out a little bit. 
right. So we'll move on to the second ring. That first ring was a chrome molly ring. As you can tell, it's a shiny ring. That's what kind of rings these Hastings are. That's the chrome molly. The second ring is a cast ring, cast iron. So you gotta be real careful with these. They break real easy. It's about the same thing. Tim's tight. Okay, well, now we'll check the other bore. With the other ring. With the other ring. Just because. And seeing how the other rings match, we don't have to worry about having any left or right, do we? No, but we'll check that again as we do it. are tight. Apparently, they don't go all the way. Okay, well. All right. Now we got oil rings. Scraper rings gaps. Yeah. They're supposed to be 10 to 14 also. What are checking for? Well, I'm looking to see if there is a difference. Don't look like it. Look like they're the same on both sides. And of course, it doesn't say up or down. <laughs> yeah, I can't even get it. I can get only get it halfway. So the tens not going. We're too tight. Yeah. So that means we're going to file on these rings just to get them to within the. Specs within specs of ten to fourteen. Just gonna check this last one here. We'll move this on. One, this one here goes in. This one here goes in a little better. So I don't know if it's because this bore might be just a little bit when he bore them. I'll find that out here because this ring was tight. If it's the ring or if it's the It's the ring. See here? Oh yeah, because that one's not going. Yeah. So the bore's good, of course, but uh, the ring, the rings aren't quite right. Rings aren't quite right. They're so little, they're, a little, they're a little tight. I guess we'll go over uh, showing how to file them and all that stuff too. So anyway, stay tuned here. Yeah, so right now we're just going to check bore on on the piston and we're gonna check the bore on the cylinder just to verify, you know, just gotta make sure you get this right.
should have clearance. We don't. Makes me wonder if the problem is is he didn't bore this wide enough. Hmm. Says he put four thousands in there. All right, so we're kind of at a standstill here. Um, this is the previous footage you saw that we came up with the the conclusion that uh, maybe the pistons are a little bit tight with the cylinder bores here, right? So what we did was we took the, all we're going to be doing right now is we're going to, we took the, the tappets out. We're going to take this in and have the guy that uh, machined this at the machine shop and, and board these, uh, just double, do a double check on the, on piston, on the piston numbers and uh, sizes. So anyway, um, that's what we'll be doing going forward here. And then we'll come back when we get our conclusion and then we'll, finish this up when we get there but otherwise uh stay tuned let's see what happens here all right so we're back from the machine shop uh we had some questions we needed to talk to the machinist about um remember just a little bit ago we were talking about uh the bore we he remeasured it with the pistons and they're measured at four and a half thousandths in clearance between the the piston and the wall, the wall of the cylinder here. So anyway, so that means that the rings are kind of tight. So we're going to end up having to, uh, we're going to use these piston rings, I believe. Uh, we haven't decided otherwise yet, but um, we're going to have to file some down on these. So like I mentioned before, these are, uh, had that chrome top ring. Uh, these are very popular rings. A lot of people use them and a lot of people don't like them because of that chrome top ring. But anyway, um, uh, I guess I got a couple things I want to talk about with that situation. And it's kind of your own preference, what you want to do. And um, so we're going to choose this way. Uh, that might be wrong for some people's thoughts, but um, and it might be the right way for some people's thoughts. So this is what I got to say. Um, these rings have the top chrome ring, like I was saying, which seat slow. They take a little bit longer to, uh, to break in. That's what I mean by seating. So um, anyways, uh, that's also kind of good too though because in one one argument here or one side of the story you got the the top ring that ends up seating kind of slow but it's the chrome makes it a harder ring so in turn uh they have longer life apparently uh which people think i think as well um but the other side of that argument or the story is the fact that um the harder the ring is the the more the the bore can wear like the cylinders in general and for for, for instance here um the harder ring the harder the ring is it can actually scrape material from the from this bore of the cylinder and actually not you know wear the ring down which might be good in one aspect but then with cast rings uh they're known to wear though cast ring will actually wear and not the cylinder bore so um it's kind of whatever way you want to go. So I guess uh, we got these rings now. We'd have to order a different set if we were going to try something else. But I think we're just going to go with these rings. These will take a little bit longer to seat, break in. But I'm not in a hurry anyway. And uh, But anyways, uh, we'll just uh, run these. So anyway, so stay tuned here. We'll work on filing these rings down. So I'm going to make them fit like they should according to our spec in our book here. So um, yeah, anyways. So... Stay tuned. All right, so we're getting started here. We're going to work on grinding these down. So anyways, we need to remove a little bit of material, but we need to move, remove it uniformly. And what I mean by that is when these get squeezed together, they need to, so the focus is work here. Here we go. So if they, when they come together, they, they, they create a, a closed circuit there, like a closed gap. Now, if we don't 
remove the material uniformly, we'll end up having like a triangle shape there and it won't be able to seat squarely amongst each other when they get squeezed together on the piston. So to do that, we're gonna do a little filing with a moto tool here, kind of like, like kind of like this, and we're gonna squeeze it together against the blade. The on blade each here, side. it's on each side. So we'll just do a little example of what we're doing here, and then we'll kind of. Yeah, and then we just keep doing that and we keep checking until we have our and we have to fit it again and do this until we get the proper gap we want to get between 10 and 14 thousandths okay yeah so somewhere if we're getting the range between 10 and 14 thousandths we'll be right on where we need to be yeah, so we're a little over on so every time we do a little bit of a grinding we need to double check because we don't want to take too much off i have a piston now But anyways, this is kind of the procedure. This is gonna be a long drawn out process, but I'm just gonna do a little recording here of how we're gonna how we're doing it, and then we'll come back a little bit later as we're almost done and go over it again. Otherwise, it get kind of boring watching all this going on. But this is kind of how we do it. Ten fits. Eleven fits. It's I think it's tight. I'd call that eleven. Uh, maybe twelve. Twelve fit. I can't see. Yeah, it goes all the way to the end there. That's yeah, that's right at twelve. It may be a little. Yeah, it may be. It didn't take much to take a lot off, did it? No, no, you gotta be real quick. <laughs> so that's the whole theory here. It doesn't take much to take a lot off. So, so we're at twelve. We're at between eleven and twelve thousand. So if we're between ten and fourteen, we're good, and we we can probably call this one good now. So now we'll just we'll check another one, and we'll do another one, and go from there. So uh, yeah. All right. So here is the second ring. Just uh, the chrome ones here. There. It doesn't take much to take a lot Ten off, dollars. like I said. So, I mean, it isn't really hard filing filing uh, rings like this. It's just that you can really mess them up real fast. They make a special tool to do grinding on, on the rings, too, but we didn't have one, so we yep. we used that. This is between 11 and 12. That's 11 and 12 also? Yep. So, this is a harder ring, so... We're going to try uh, it on the other one because we want to make sure... And if we have to remove material off a cast iron ring, it this way it would really eat the material fast. So because it's softer. Because of course, yeah, like it's like you said, it's softer. So Let's see now we're going to check the the ring in the other bore and see what it if it fits better or worse on that one. Then we'll know which one to run that one in. In case the bores for some reason it's are different. 11. Well, just goes. It's just like it is on the other side. Yeah, so that just means that the machining was done uniformly, properly. You did a nice job. So, this is exciting. Now we have... Uh, so we have a ring here that can go in either bore. Yeah, we have the top rings done now. now I checked this ring in this bore, but I didn't check it in this one. So I'm yeah. going to do it in this one. Because that way, I don't know, I just feel better. I want to feel like I can put those rings in either. It'll be fine. That one went pretty easy. And 12 just goes. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. And being at a, I would call a tight 12, would be right exactly in the middle of 10 to 14. 
Yeah, I would be. Leaven fits real good. Okay, so this is the second ring, and it's got leaven to fit in there. Yeah, 12 goes in, but it's it's like the other one. It's snug. So, and it fits the same way on the other side. So, And these rings <clears throat> are identified with a dot. There's a dot right there. And it's tapered on one side. One side's flat. And so the taper's up so that when compression hits, it blows the ring out and, and makes contact. That's what that's all about. Okay. So now we're going to grind this ring. Because this ring, if I remember rightly, without touching it, is too tight. <clears throat> Correctly, we cannot get uh, we cannot get a ten or eleven. Yeah, ten to fit. There's fourteen. There's thirteen. Where's the ten? There it is. If I remember right, we can't get one of these to fit. Yeah, it didn't go all the way in. And that's, yeah, that's... It only goes part of the way. See how it doesn't go all the way in? Oh, yeah. Let's see that in here. Um, it only goes about half away. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, um, yeah, 10's <clears throat> That's are... why we have to grind it, because it's got to go... <clears throat> a minimum is 10. Yeah, minimum. Like I said earlier, he does it that way. It's that way it, when they come together, they they still touch. Square. It should anyway. Yeah, they come together square. I mean, they're not going to touch when they're in the cylinder, but. So 10 fits now. <laughs> easy. 11 fits pretty easy. I bet you 12 will be tight. Yep, it is. It's just snug. All right. So. Well, we managed to do this without messing them up. Well, we got the oil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. It's the bigger one. Okay. Just check it here quick. All the way in. Twelve goes all the way in and snug. Yep. I like to do that both sides because just because. Okay. All right. Oh, now we'll move on the oil ring. Set. Oh, we looked up close. This is oil ring because it has the oil ring oil gap, the ring gap right there between the two uh, top and bottom parts. actually allows oil to go in and out of these holes in this bottom groove here. Uh, I can't remember how tight this is, but we're going to find out. I measured this the other day. I can't even get a 10. Can't even get a 10 in it. Okay. Look how tight it is. Can't even get a 10 in it. Oh, yeah. If I remember right, they were like 9 or 8. And that's not correct. No. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to do the same process here of filing this down too. And then uh, we're going to double check the book where it says for oil ring gap. 10 to 14 for compressions and scraper ring gap. Scraper is your oil ring. Is 10 to 14. It's the same. So, I mean, so that's, what that's what they're calling for. So.
All right. That's what we're going to give it. That one one extra time because it was so tight. Oh, I got gap now. Watch it, I'll have too much. But that's okay. More is okay as long as it's not like it's as it. Same. Right. There may be a looser 12 than the other ones, but. Yeah, see, that just struggled to get it in there. And the 13 don't go all the way, see? One goes about halfway. Yeah, I, see that. I could probably force it in there, but we don't. No. We don't need to. All right. Well, that's kind of how we're doing good. the ring gap. So we got one more scraper ring to do, and then we're ready to start putting pistons on. Hopefully here. So. Yeah. yeah, I suppose it is. Yeah, using power tools to do it. Otherwise, we end up having to use an actual file on it. And yeah, we can, but the steel chrome ring is really hard to file. And you can break it. Yeah. It's just right there, too. Okay, we're good here, I think. I'll turn All right. on the other side. All right, well, we're, we're good. good. Okay. We got most of the rest of the stuff here to do this top end stuff laying here. So we got different push rods. Last ones we had were all mangled up and bent and broken and pieces missing off of it. We got our, uh, yeah, we got our tubes here and stuff. So yeah, we're gonna get ready to go here. Two wedding bands. So, yeah, we mentioned some of the stuff a little bit ago, but yeah, anyway, we're gonna get ready here. So stay tuned here. All right, we're just doing a little bit more preparation here. Um, we got the lifters in now, and then he's tying these like we did before when we took it apart. But we're tying them now so they don't fall out when we flip this thing over. This is going to be really, I mean, if we didn't do this, it'd be really hard to keep them from falling out while having this upside down. Maybe. All right, so here we go. We're getting ready to put the pistons on. So we're going to pre-lube all these, uh, these wrist pins here, these wrist pin bushings here. And then we'll be able to slide the pistons down and then slide the, the piston pins in. And of course, uh, we're getting the, the cam lobes prepped as well there. In one of the earlier videos, we were talking about this this oil um, drain here for the um, it's a drain, it's a right? It was, feed. It's, a, it's a feed, or, or yeah, it was the feed, feed wasn't it? Okay, feed yeah. The lifters. We end up getting the right component and putting it in 
like it's supposed to be. So that's all good to go now. So this thing will be a little bit better than it was for sure. It's already starting to look better than it was, but yeah, anyway. All right, it's gonna check both of these and then we'll be moving on, so. Well, we're just oiling them. Yeah, well, yeah, we've checked them already, but we're just making sure we get the oil through. Spread around and I don't wanna put them together dry. Right. All right. Cylinder gets on it, it'll. All right, so here we go, we got the gasket down. We used the Loctite 510 on this stuff and it'll work pretty good. We've used it before. So anyway, we're going to get ready to put the pistons on now, I believe. So you want to bring, bring this up to the top? Not yet. Oh, okay. We're going to put the, we're going to put the pistons, rings on the pistons. Oh yeah, we got to get the pistons. Yeah, we got to get the pistons prepared yet. So stay tuned here. Okay. So here we are. Uh, there's no front or back, but we're going to probably put the pistons going the same direction with each other. Um, because the way the writing is, it doesn't really matter, but I don't like things all messed up looking. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll put a pin, we'll put a wrist pin uh, retaining ring in on the, on the one side, uh, for sure. On the, on the, yeah, on the inside of the piston, the ones we can't get to easily. So this would be considered inside with the other piston sitting here. So then we just pop the, the pin in from the other outer sides. And then we can put the ring in, the retaining ring in when we pop the pin through. Um, if you remember when we took this bike apart, and then if not, I'll just say it again, but uh, the piston rings were all over the place on there. They weren't even 180 from each other. And right, 180, right? Because right. they'd be like, they got to make a pie division out of it so you put one ring gap here one like over here and then one over here so we're going to make sure we have that for sure going for us here all right well either 180 apart on top or divided threes yeah so yeah whichever way you want to go it really don't matter as long as they're not lined up now these rings look the same on both sides I've looked at them several times and I cannot see no difference so doesn't show anything different on it. yeah so that means that these can go either way most likely some rings do, some yeah then some can and some can <clears throat> so yeah there's no dot indicating anything there's no beveled edge on one way they look identical on both sides so 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 what we're going to do here is we're going to put this ring on here. Helps to have a ring expander, which I have. So the next person. Right. Now if you remember a dot. Yeah, the dot was on this one. That's on top. That's the second ring. Okay. I'm gonna grab one of these bad boys. And it don't really matter. So we're going to put this ring here on the top. You can break rings real easy if you're not 
careful with them. And that's why I like this tool because... You know, it doesn't spread it out too much and it doesn't... That kind of stuff. Right. And it holds them in the, in, the, in the right position as well. Now we'll line them up later. And we'll move on. All right. Well, stay tuned here. We're going to get this ready to go. We don't use a lot of oil. Just oil on these skirts. Good. that. Let's set it on something like this. This will be fine. So we're preparing the pistons to go in right now. Just getting the skirts oiled up. Dilute the bore. I'm just going to work on uh, alignment of the rings here and then we'll compress compress them and slide them into the cylinder. Yep. First. That's how I like to do it. Then you don't need ring ring compressors and stuff. So, so. I'll put the first ring there. I personally like to put these on opposite sides. I mean, some people tell me I'm wrong. I don't care. Uh, it's hard to do these when the pistons are hooked to the rods. Yeah. Rings. Didn't go, did it? Rings fell off. Ah, well, that's kind of a bugger here. We'll get it here in a second. There it goes. Oh, did he get it? Yeah.
it's not exactly this ring compressor is almost too big I got another one all right stay tuned here This doesn't get much better. Here we go. Right. Well, then we just put the pin in the other side here. It's got to come up a little bit, but huh? it's got to come up just a little bit, but otherwise it'll fit. There we go. All right. Okay. Now we're gonna attempt to put this on the bottom end there. All right, so we're going to bring this on here and... Wait a minute, i got to get this in here first. There we go. Oops. Okay. All right, I gotta go up a little bit more. I can see it. Yeah, it's like right there. Oh, uh, there it moved. Here we go. Right there? Yeah, push it in there. That's not going in. Well, you gotta wiggle it. There we go, right there. Isn't it right there? There it, there it is. All right. Okay, now we gotta. You're gonna probably have to stop for a little All bit. Right, you gotta hold have on. To hold this so I can put the keepers in. All right, so we got the the keeper on the other side. It's gonna put this one on now. It's getting too low. Is it? Yeah. There, now hold it there. Got it. In case we drop it. Or it flies. Yeah, yeah really. Because it can't. Trust me. <clears throat> okay, get in there now. Come on now. I want you to hook in there. It's starting to rotate down. All right, we want to make sure these go a certain direction so they don't can't okay. pop off either, you know. Okay. So okay, now go ahead and pull that rod out of there. Now what I want to do is push these pistons up in here. All right, well, there we go. Now we gotta put the lock, the nuts on it, and we gotta start torquing down. 
All right, well, there we got the cylinder on finally. A little bit difficult, but we got it. I want to make sure the, the wrist pin rings or her retaining rings are a certain direction so they don't come off and with the, the momentum of the pistons going up and down. So we make sure they're uh, at a certain position. So, anyway, stay tuned here. All right, so we're just double checking the, the retaining ring there, and this is kind of the orientation. You want this to be in this direction. So when it's going up and down and you got in centrifugal motion happen, it doesn't like squeeze or expand these in any direction and actually cause the ring to come out, the retaining ring to come out. So this does look like it's engaged really well on this side, and we just checked the other side. And so. that groove that's down at the bottom, that's so you can get a pick underneath of there and lift and pop them out if you go to replace pistons. It has nothing to do with putting the, the anything else. Okay, yeah, so that allows us to get in there and hook onto it and pull it out. Sweet, all right, so we're ready to put this together now. All right, so we're installing the, the base nuts now and start getting them to go on. my side ready to get ran down the rest of the way torqued there's a much clearance here for a nice big socket so we're gonna end up probably uh, having to wrench them down or yeah. use a dog bone or something to get in there with it's that fit in there I don't think there's much clearance for that All right, so we got the cylinder down the rest of the way, and now we're gonna. I'm gonna run these nuts in the rest of the way, so we have less uh, wrenching to do. It's gonna be time consuming taking it off every so often, <laughs> and then tightening. So I'm gonna do a lot of the busy, easy work here if I can. This one's kind of tight. Might not be able to avoid that with that one. And then this front one. Yeah, some of them are stiff. It's like, we didn't really clean the threads up first, but didn't really think about doing that. But with the way a lot of the threads were in this bike, kind of probably should have. So, all right, well, hold on here and we'll get this all finished up here. here let me have that one. All right, so we're gonna, we got them all ran down all the way and we're just gonna tighten them up the rest of the way. You just wanna make sure you have them all tightened about the same. Uh, you really can't get on it with a per se uh, torque wrench, of course, because there's no room for the for the adapter to go on, like a dog bone or a crow foot or anything, because of the way the nut's made. And then, yeah, just as long as you use the with judgment, uh, pretty much the same all the way around. So we pretty much got this part all ready to go. I think we're gonna be working on the top end now, the the, the head and and in the rocker box section. So, all right, so we got the cylinder down and everything, but we wanted to put some oil in the in the bottom end, but we kind of forgot to do that. And we can't go to the top end there to the piston, so we opened up this uh, this plug back here, and we're gonna put about I don't know a good amount of uh, oil in there, but not too much, probably around five ounces or so. So. That's kind of something you don't want to forget to do. Now it has initial oil down there when it goes to rotate when it's probably when you start starting it up. So, all right. Well, hope you enjoyed all this on the on this uh, first section of putting this motor back together. Um, the next section we'll work on putting the head on. So, uh, anyways. So we'll see you again soon.